Good morning, Year Sixes. Good morning, Mr. Honey. So it's coming into that time of the year where we're coming up to the end of our units and we are starting to assess you guys. So first of all, why is assessment important? Well, for you guys being year six, you are going to head into high school next year, in the future, potentially college and university. Uh, it's also important for me as a teacher to monitor your progress, see how you're going, provide feedback, identify what you know and what you can learn to make learning authentic. So what we have learned throughout the unit, so I'm just going to go through a quick recap now of what we have learned. So first of all, dam constructions and these effects on it. So we're going to watch a little recap video once again, just as a refresher. G'day guys, here I am at Trellin Dam. Now you might be thinking, why am I here? What am I doing? But this is to refresh your memory on that lesson that we've done about constructing dams. So first of all, I want you to flash back. And I remember how we talked about the loads of concrete needed to build. Absolute tons needed to build that. Uh, also things like diversion tunnels to direct the river flow whilst they came in and built the, the dam wall. Uh, I also want you to trace back and remember the picture about Lake Pedder. So how they flooded that and made that into a dam. And now, so we got Trevallon Dam, Lake Pedder. I want you to think about the environmental effects to an ecosystem when a dam is put in place. So things such as unwanted predators, um, no more river flow, things like that. Hopefully that refreshed your memory. So we also looked at the Lake Pedder, so the before and after shots. So this was before Lake Pedder was made into a dam, after it was made into a dam. Uh, now we're just going to look at this video on the orangutan habitats. In earlier in the year we did a lot of work about palm oil and how that affects us in our schools. We're just gonna watch this little video again right now. Hey guys, at the moment I am up a tree. Uh, why you might ask, but I'm up here to try and emulate an orangutan's home and habitat. So this is my little tree house. So I want you to flash back when we did our unit of work on deforestation and orangutan's home and habitats being destroyed in exchange for palm oil being extracted. We also looked at this infograph just to the right of screen. So have a look at that, and that actually tells us where Australia Australians import their palm oil from. So we also applied this to like actual living. So everyday things such as soap and processed food and toothpaste actually use palm oil. And we looked at this in depth in our school canteen at what foods were actually used palm oil. So we also did a little bit of work about sustainability in the, in the beginning of the year. Now we did that on Jack Johnson's song, Three R's. Um, what are the three R again? R's again? Reuse, reduce, recycle. Brilliant. So we're just going to refresh our memories on this video. So now I want you to remember back to that lesson we did on sustainability about reducing, reusing, and recycling. Now we also did a lesson on Jack Johnson's song, the three R's. I'm just going to play it now just to refresh your memory. It goes a little something like this. If you're going to the market to buy some juice, you gotta bring your own bags and learn to reduce. Your brother or your sister's got some cool clothes, you can try them on before you buy some of those. Reuse. You gotta learn to reuse. And if the first two ones don't work out, and you've got to make some trash, don't throw it out. Recycle. Now we're going to be looking at once again how our rubbish sometimes where it ends up. So this little this city in China is a good example of where our rubbish goes up. China's well known as the world's biggest exporter of everything from iPhones to buttons, but it's also the world's biggest importer of garbage. In the industry, it's called scrap. Everything from cardboard boxes to shredded helicopters. Resource poor China needs it to squeeze out more raw materials. And all those container ships that bring goods to the world can't come back empty, especially when the return trip is so cheap. So often they come back with garbage, more and more of it over the last decade, a lot of it from the U.S. 
That's a touchy issue in a country grappling with serious pollution problems. Earlier this year, Beijing launched a program called Green Fence to try and keep out material that's hard to recycle. Adam Minter, an author who's been covering China's recycling industry for over a decade, took us to visit a recycling company in Ningbo, just south of Shanghai, to better understand what's at stake. So we're standing right now inside one of the world's most concentrated and intense recycling zones. There are dozens of Chinese companies here that have imported millions of tons of recyclables from around the world over the years, and they're turning it into the raw materials that feed China's industrial machine. Uh, but, well, for an intensely industrialized zone, the air doesn't smell too bad, huh? No, and that's one of the reasons uh, that it's all concentrated in one area. Ten years ago, these companies were spread out all over Ningbo. The government made the decision to move them all into one area so it's easier to regulate them and watch what they're doing, and so that tends to clean things up, and they watch each other. Mike Chun runs a recycling firm with warehouses in the U.S. and Europe. He pays about 1,600 U.S. dollars for a ton of old motors and gets metal dust, steel nuggets, and here's the real money. So what's this? Ah, uh, this is 91% copper. It's about 6,500 U.S. dollars a ton on the market. Garbage can be a lucrative business, but Mike wants to move up the food chain. He recently launched a website for scrap trading globally. And he provides comparisons of metal prices for his clients. Still, while you can chart scrap prices, every batch is different. The only real way to assess the value is to see it. We've got we've got somebody's what is this kitchen kitchen faucet? Yeah. Okay, so what we have here is a faucet that weighs you know probably three four pounds and uh, you know a couple bucks a pound for this kind of a thing. You get an idea of what sort of value is here in a warehouse where you've got literally thousands of tons of brass honey scrap like this. So here we are, your old faucet, your old water jug, all ending up here. Right, so we're gonna look at now what will the assessment test. So, the assessment will test the rights and responsibilities you have as an Australian global citizen, how you work as a team to come up with responses to an issue and identify the advantages and disadvantages of certain practices, use of primary sources, so our primary sources are pictures and books, and secondary sources, so like internet pages and books that people have wrote about this place. Another thing I want you to do is describe the effects of certain practices and reflection on how you respond to the issue or challenge you have chosen as a group. So you're going to respond personally and as a group to this certain area of learning you have chosen. Uh, so I want to see different, different things, so different modes of communication such as songs, videos, maps, pictures, graphs, be creative with it. So how will you complete the assessment task? So you're going to choose one of the learning areas that we have done. So the effects on dam construction, deforestation of orangutan habitats, or the three R's, Jack Johnson's song. So you can do this in a few different ways. So the first way is the interactive poster on a website called Canvas. It's a really cool website that we worked on earlier in the year, so you can use that in your group. Uh, a song, you can make up a song just like Jack Johnson did, or you can make a video. So I'm going to place you in groups of three or four. Now in your group, you're going to describe the effects of your chosen practice and how it affects people and places. And once you've done that, you're going to also reflect on the effects and respond to the issues or challenges as a group. So when is it due? It's due on the 4th of July. So we're going to have the morning block for the remainder of the week. So every morning block, you're going to get in your group and work on this project together. Great, so how to submit your work? You want to complete a group presentation on your poster, your video, or your song. So if you're using a poster, remember it is on Canvas. If you're doing a video, three minutes approximately, so give or take a little more or a little less and a two minute song if you are choosing a song. Are there any questions before I split you up into groups? Darth, is that your hand up or is that you scratching your ear with a piece of chicken? Oh, uh, just scratching my ear.